In this video, I'm going to construct a power function that goes through two points. There's two methods that I like to use for this. Uh, one would be using algebra, finding the correct constants by hand. And another method would be through power function regression. And I'll use desmos.com for that. Uh, first, let's do the desmos uh, way of finding it because that's easier. All I have to do is type in my points 3 comma 5 and 935. Okay now in our graph it's going to create a scatter plot for us. Now sometimes you may have much more data than this um, but two points is the minimum that you need to make power function regression. And it's going to be similar to an exponential type of graph, but uh, just a little different. A power function has the form of y equals ax raised to a power, but we don't know what the exponent is. Um, in the past, we had looked at um, a e to the x, or perhaps a e to the r x. And this would be an exponential function. Okay, but we don't want that this time. We actually want a power function. So we're going to make it a x to the power of n. And what the regression is going to do here is it's going to find the, the best fit values of a and n that would make a curve that goes through those two points. Uh, so as we can see here, our a is apparently 0.714 and our n is 1.77. All right, now we can construct the power function. It'll be y equals 0 0.714 times x to the power of 1.77. And it's worth noting this is an approximation, so I'll use a squiggle here just to indicate that. All right, that's doing it through regression. Now I'll try to find those same values uh, by hand using algebra. So just like in other cases where we found functions that go through two points, uh, we're going to want to separate our function into one case where we do point one and then another case where we do point two and then we'll combine the two equations into one and solve for the unknowns. We'll start off with y equals ax to the n in both cases. So this is going to be y1, x1. This can be y2, x2. I'm going to let my x1 be 3, and my y1 can be 5. That makes my x2 9, and my y2 is 35. So let's plug those in. All right, we've got two equations and two unknowns. And we should now be able to combine the equations and solve the system. So I'm going to start by solving for a here. I'll solve both for a. That'll give me a equals 5 over 3 to the n if I divide. Over here we'll get a equals 35 over 9 to the n. As I've done in the past, whenever I solve an equation for a variable and then solve the other equation for that same variable, 
uh, we can now set the results equal to each other. It's a really useful algebraic technique. I'm going to set these two things equal to each other. All right, now I need to get I need to get the ends together. Uh, so I'm going to want to do a little bit of cross multiplication here. I'm going to send the 9 to the n up here. And then I'm actually going to swap it with the 5 there. Yeah, we're allowed to do that. So we'll get 9 to the n over 3 to the n equals 35 over 5. All right, I'm going to use this property of exponents that uh, 9 to the n over 3 to the n is the same as 9 over 3 being all raised to the n. And we can do this division and get 7 there. Now we'd like to solve for n. And we're going to want to use a log or you know, a natural log or a log of some other base to bring that n down. I'll just use natural log on both sides. Notice that 9 over 3 is 3, so that simplifies that a little. Now by properties of logs, we're allowed to bring the n down in front. And we get this, divide both sides by ln3, and we have it. n equals ln7 over ln3. It's approximately 1.77, just as we had found uh, through Desmos regression. All right, we can't stop there, though, because we want to go back now and find a uh, value for a. So since a here is equal to 5 over 3 to the n, we can plug that in now that we know what n is. It's going to be 5 over 3 to the 1.77 approximately. 0.714. Okay, there's our constants. Obviously that technique is just a little bit more tedious and algebra intensive uh, than it would be if we just plugged it into a calculator and did the regression. All right, so at this point, I'll try this next one here. This is also a power function because we've got a variable raised to a power. It says uh, a man's weight W in pounds is given by W equals CD to the negative 2, where D is the distance in miles from the man to the center of Earth, and C is some constant. Let's let R represent the radius of the Earth and suppose the man's weight at the surface of Earth is 212 pounds. Can you find the constant in terms of R? Okay, so our original formula says weight equals C uh, D to the negative 2. Now the distance is going to be the radius of Earth. And we also know the weight is 212, so let's plug those things in. All right, now if we just simply solve for C, we'll have the answer to A.
Looks like C is 212 over R to the negative 2, which would be the same as 212 R squared if we bring it up. Now it says, what is the man's weight one quarter of R above the Earth's surface? All right, so if you're standing on Earth's surface, then you're a distance R from the center. And that's actually the distance that matters when it comes to calculating the weight. If you go a quarter of R above the Earth's surface, then you would have this situation. You are here. But that would be a total distance then of the sum of those two, which would be 5 fourths R. That would be by adding 1 fourth plus 4 fourths. You get 5 fourths. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug into the formula everything that I have so far. We don't know what the weight will be, but we do have an expression that we can substitute in here for C. And we do know the distance. Uh, the distance will be 5 fourths R. All right, so let's plug in. We'll get 212 R squared. For C, and then for D, we'll get 5 fourths R, raise that to a negative 2 power. And now we can uh, apply our rules of exponents, send that negative 2 to everybody, even the denominator there. So we'll get. 212r squared times 5 to the negative 2 over 4 to the negative 2 times r to the negative 2. Okay. I'll see if I can rearrange the fraction a little bit. Let's move the 5 down below, make its power positive. I'll bring the 4 up and make that exponent positive. The r to the negative 2 by rules of exponents can go down below and switch the sign of its power from negative to positive. And that's nice because it looks like these are going to cancel. And we'll get 212 times 16 over 25. Hundred thirty-five point six eight. So it looks like um, the weight will go down quite substantially. Uh, as the distance is increased.